In this video, we are going to demo Skyline Health Diagnostics. Earlier in this series, I gave an overview on all of the Skyline tools. If you missed it, I will put a link in the description below. In this demo, we will see that Skyline Health Diagnostics enables self-service troubleshooting and reviews a log bundle for issues known to VMware. Let's get started. Skyline Health Diagnostics is a virtual appliance you deploy in your environment. I will link an article in the description with installation instructions. Where Skyline Health for vSphere and Skyline Advisor are proactive tools to avoid issues, Skyline Health Diagnostics is a reactive tool that can help identify resolution on an issue that has already occurred. It can provide instant analysis for issues known to VMware without the need to open a support ticket. It can also be used in air-gapped environments that do not have internet access. You can use Skyline Health Diagnostics to do everything, that is, collect the log bundle and then analyze it in one movement, or you can manually generate the bundle and then upload it to the local appliance for analysis. There are currently three different types of analysis that can be done. vSphere, vSAN, and VMware Cloud Foundation. You can also upload the log bundle manually. Let's walk through a vSphere analysis. I'll provide information on my vCenter server and my credentials. And I'll check connection. When I get a successful result, I can run diagnostics. This will allow me to determine what checks to run and what inventory items to run them on. I don't have vSAN, so we'll uncheck that plugin. Now let's talk about what inventory items to select. I always include vCenter, but I only choose the hosts that are pertinent to the problem I'm having. If I'm having issues with a specific host, I'll include only that. If I'm having issues that span a number of hosts, or maybe an entire cluster, I'll choose all of those. If your goal for using the Health Diagnostics Appliance today is to get a general health slash sanity check on your environment, you can include everything. For this run, I'm going to choose just one host because I am having an issue with it. When I click Validate, I'll be given the choice to make a couple other decisions. I can provide a tag to help me identify this report later. That might be a name or a service tag or a support request number. I can also choose the number of days to use in the analysis. Perhaps the issue occurred in the last 24 hours, so I can choose one day. I tend to use an N plus one calculus when I choose a number of days, just on the off chance there's information that happened before the issue. So if I know the issue happened in the last 24 hours, I will choose two days. When I click finish, the diagnostics appliance will talk to vCenter and generate a log bundle. If we check vCenter, we'll see that I'm generating log bundles right now. Coming back, I can see the, the task is still working. At this point, I can move on to other tasks. We all know that a log bundle can take a few minutes to generate. I can open another browser tab. I can move on to another application to complete my work. One thing to know is that when you come back to check the progress, you may want to click Refresh Tasks. I have seen if I leave the browser tab or the browser loses focus, sometimes the progress bar does not update completely. While we're waiting on this log bundle to generate and work through its analysis, let's look at some reports I've already run. I can show reports on this tab. We'll see a number of reports I've already run, the tags I have assigned to them. We can download the HTML report for each one view it or delete it. In this instance, I'm going to view this report. This particular one contains a, a run of my entire environment. We'll see a summary of the analysis, summaries of the findings, when it ran, how long it ran, how big it was. And then at the bottom, we'll see, we'll see findings for each item in my inventory. Let's start with vCenter. Expanding that, I will see three log levels, much like syslog. If I look at the informational level, I'll see 
an uptime report. And embarrassingly, my vCenter has been up for several months at this point. I am due to install a patch later today, so hopefully that will get restarted. Looking at the warning level, I will see that one partition on my vCenter server appliance is a little low on disk space. The report shows me a helpful article that can help me fix it. Looking at the error level, it has identified some duplicate entries in a registration database. Instructional article is linked for, to help me resolve the issue, as well as the pertinent data about the entries it found. So let's look at my troublesome host, ESX01. If I expand that, the first thing I'll see for any ESX host is a hardware compatibility list summary. Let's talk about hardware compatibility in VMware for a moment. Hardware vendors are responsible to test their hardware for specific releases of vSphere. They run those tests and provide the results to VMware who certify them and then publish them in our hardware compatibility list. Behind the scenes, each of these hardware components has a registration number that is tied back to that hardware manufacturer. In my lab, I run what is called a white box ESX host. If you're not familiar with the term, a white box ESX is a machine much like a PC built of components that are known to work from other tests, but don't have registration numbers that tie back to a single manufacturer. So all of my hardware, while it works, will show as not supported or not listed. Obviously, this is a home lab, not a production environment. If you're seeing hardware compatibility issues in your environment listed here, I urge you to take them seriously. We depend on our hardware to work the same way every time, and that is what the hardware compatibility process at VMware is designed to verify. Looking at the analysis results, I have my same three levels. We'll start at informational. I have one virtual machine that has VNUMA disabled. It does, it is disabled because I have hot plug enabled. VNUMA is its own long discussion. There is a KB article if you want to learn more. I can tell you that NUMA helps performance on large footprint VMs. So if you are seeing this in your production environment, you should probably look into it. Looking at the warning level, we'll see another reminder about my hardware compatibility. We've discussed that. So we can move on to error. Skyline Health Diagnostics has found log entries that indicate permanent device loss or all pass down events. It just so happens this particular host has sporadically reported issues with accessing an NFS data store in my environment. Health Diagnostics was able to find in the logs at a very specific time window and a very specific device ID that these events have occurred and has provided a KB article link that I can use to hopefully resolve this issue. Moving back to the main Skyline Health window, I have a few tips I'd like to share with you. When you access Skyline Health, you will use either the IP address you provided or a fully qualified domain name you've, you've registered for this VM. Make sure you use the HTTPS protocol when accessing this web page. If you use HTTP, the web browser will spin and you'll get the impression that the appliance is not working. At this time, there is no HTTP to HTTPS redirect. I'm sure they'll fix this in a future version. If you plan to open a support ticket, I highly recommend you manually generate the log bundle. Right now, there is no way to upload a bundle to VMware support from the appliance. If you generate the support bundle directly through vCenter, this will allow you to get a support ticket started while reviewing the logs locally using health diagnostics. And you can work the problem from two different angles at the same time. After all, the goal is to get the problem resolved as quickly as possible. If you are able to resolve it yourself, you can always close the ticket. When you encounter an issue in your environment, a general best practice is to grab a diagnostic log bundle from vCenter as close to the issue as possible, even before you open a support request. It is important to capture as much forensic data as possible. If a large amount of data is generated, we don't want to let the important information slip by. I hope you found this brief demo useful. If you did, please click like. You can also subscribe to be notified when I post new content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.